you. The Sherman Mitten Bridge was expected to open this morning at 5 o'clock, but as of right now, it is still very much closed. Let's bring in Jim Stratman, who was originally prepared to do a whole report on how great it is. That I just wanted to give some good news. Some this good morning, news, Eric. but plans have changed and that bridge is not opening now at all today. At all today. It's not going to open up until at this point. Friday is what we're hearing from INDOT. You can take a look at the post that they put uh, up here. You can see, well, we're looking at the Sherman Mitten Bridge here on INDOT right now. And what they posted actually last night is that the bridge itself won't actually reopen until Friday. Now, there's been no official word from the Sherman Mitten Renewal Project on this, but we'll be on the lookout for that as it hopefully will come out a little bit later on today. Now, this phase which is phase four that we just exited is supposed to be focused on replacing the upper deck of the bridge. That process led to a number of total closures, a reworking of the traffic flow along the Sherman Mitten Bridge and general headaches for months for drivers both on both sides of the rivers. Now we did speak with one of those drivers, Lanika Allen, who told us that she was looking forward to trying to put this phase of reconstruction behind her. It's difficult. And time yeah. is money, right? And gas is expensive. Gas is very expensive. It gives us great joy just because what I got to do is not going to take me an hour to accomplish a task. Now, some highlights of the project so far do include that replacement of the bridge decks, new lighting and drainage repairs. The current closure actually started on May 6, the closure of the eastbound lanes. Now, once again, when we get more information from the Sherman Mint Renewal Project officials, we'll bring that to you both on air and online. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll dive a little bit deeper into what this next phase of the project, phase five, looks like. Eric? Jim, thank you. Right now, Metro Police are investigating a deadly shooting in the Bashford Manor area as a murder-suicide. It happened around 1030 last night at an apartment complex on Trafalgar Square, which is right off of Barkstown Road in the Waterson. When police officers entered the apartment, they say they found the bodies of a man and a woman, both who had gunshot wounds. As of this morning, their names haven't been released. We'll continue to update you as we learn more. Mount Washington Police are investigating a crash involving an LMPD vehicle. This one happened around 1.30 Sunday morning at Parkview Avenue in Landis Lane, which is about a half mile from Bartstown Road. Mount Washington Police did not provide details on how the crash happened, but said the LMPD officer did contact them to do the investigation and no one was hurt. They also cite online claims that the crash was connected to a police chase, police chase saying those online reports are not accurate. The man charged in a deadly shooting at a gas station will face a judge today. Police arrested 18 year old Gage Lewis early yesterday morning, saying Saturday night just before nine, he shot two people inside a gas station in the Beachmont neighborhood. Both were taken to a local hospital. One of the victims, 21 year old Dion Smith Jr. died. Court records show Lewis admitted to the shooting and show there's also surveillance video confirming it. Lewis is charged with murder and is expected in court at nine o'clock this morning. There it is. That was a trophy being hoisted after a record breaking win for the new PGA champ Xander Shoffley. He locked down his first major victory after playing in the championship for eight straight years. He ended at 21 under par, which is the lowest score ever recorded in a major championship. Shoffley said he was nervous playing that final hole, but says that win feels great. Just a huge, just so much relief when it lipped in. I don't even really remember it lipping in. I just heard, heard everyone roaring, um, and I just look up to the sky. It feels amazing. Um, yeah, just a wide, wide range of emotions for me. Uh, very, satis very satisfying win. Shuffley beat out live golf league captain Bryson DeChambeau and Norway's Victor Hovland. Now, Scotty Scheffler, the number one ranked golfer in the world, who made headlines Friday after being arrested outside the PGA Championship, tied for eighth place, finishing 13 under par. And this morning, the charges against him have not been formally dropped. Early Friday, before round two began, Scheffler tried to go around a police barricade to get into Valhalla. Police had blocked traffic after a shuttle bus hit and killed a PGA vendor employee. Scheffler was detained for nearly three hours, but was still able to make it back to the course for his tea time. Mayor Craig Greenberg says there is no body camera footage of that incident. Scheffler has been charged with assault of a police officer, which is a felony and several misdemeanors. He says the championship wore on him, but he's thankful for the support he's received. Fairly tired, definitely a lot more tired than I have been finishing some other tournaments. 
um, you know, was fortunate to be out here competing, doing what I love. And, um, you know, out on the golf course, the, the support this week that I got from, from the fans was tremendous. So a lot of you were saying, oh, the charges are going to be dropped against him. That those that was making its way around the news yesterday. Uh, but the question is, will the Jefferson County continue with the charges against Scheffler or drop them? Well, as of right now, in the statement from the Jefferson County attorney, Mike O'Connell, he said, quote, his office has made no decisions regarding the case of Mr. Scheffler. We continue to gather information in the case and will review and proceed accordingly. And Scheffler is due in court tomorrow. Now, John Mills, who was working security at Valhalla, was the man who was hit and killed by that shuttle bus Friday morning. Police say he was trying to cross the road to the course. Saturday, Mayor Greenberg reemphasized his support for the Mills family. And I again want to extend our city's condolences to his entire family who I've been in contact with. Our city has a history of coming together and showing strength, love, and hospitality following tragedies. And we will do just that over this weekend and in the days ahead. Right now, no charges have been filed against the driver who hit Mills.